Second Samuel chapter 22. David spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge. My saviour, you save me from violence. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. For the waves of death encompassed me, the torrents of perdition assailed me, the cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I called. From his temple, he heard my voice and my cry came to his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations of the heavens trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He was seen upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness around him a canopy, thick clouds, a gathering of water. Out of the brightness before him, coals of fire flamed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven. The Most High uttered his voice. He sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and routed them. The channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were laid bare at the rebuke of God, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He reached from on high. He took me. He drew me out of mighty waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They came upon me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his ordinances were before me and from his statutes I did not turn aside. I was blameless before him and I kept myself from guilt. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his sight. With the loyal you show yourself loyal. With the blameless you show yourself blameless. With the pure you show yourself pure. And with the crooked you show yourself perverse. You deliver a humble people, but your eyes are upon the haughty to bring them down. Indeed, you are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord lightens my darkness. By you I can crush a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. This God, his way is perfect. The promise of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. For who is God but the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? The God who has girded me with strength has opened wide my path. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have given me the shield of your salvation and your help has made me great. You have made me stride freely and my feet do not slip. I pursued my enemies and destroyed them and did not turn back until they were consumed. I consumed them, struck them down so that they did not rise. They fell under my feet. For you girded me with strength for the battle. You made my assailants sink under me. You made my enemies turn their backs to me. Those who hated me, I destroyed them. They looked, but there was no one to save them. They cried to the Lord, but he did not answer them. I beat them fine like the dust of the earth. I crushed them and stamped them down like the mire of the streets. You delivered me from strife with the peoples. You kept me as the head of the nations. People whom I had not known served me. 
Foreigners came cringing to me. As soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me. Foreigners lost heart and came trembling out of their strongholds. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock and exalted be my God, the rock of my salvation. The God who gave me vengeance and brought down peoples under me, who brought me out from my enemies. You exalted me above my adversaries. You delivered me from the violent. For this I will extol you, O Lord, among the nations, and sing praise to your name. He is a tower of salvation for his king and shows steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Second Samuel chapter 23. Now these are the last words of David. The oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favourite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on grassy lands. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them, one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. These are the names of the warriors whom David had. Joseb Bas Hebeth, a Tachemonite. He was the chief of the three. He wielded his spear against 800 whom he killed at one time. Next to him among the three warriors was Eleazar, son of Dodo, son of Ahoi. He was with David when they defeated the Philistines who were gathered there for battle. The Israelites withdrew. But he stood his ground. He struck down the Philistines until his arm grew weary, though his hand clung to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day. Then the people came back to him, but only to strip the dead. Next to him was Shema, son of Aji, the Hararite. The Philistines gathered together at Lahai, where there was a plot of ground full of lentils, and the army fled from the Philistines. But he took his stand in the middle of the plot, defended it, and killed the Philistines. And the Lord brought about a great victory. Towards the beginning of harvest, three of the thirty chiefs went down to join David at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Raphaim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Then the three warriors broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and brought it to David, but he would not drink of it. He poured it out to the Lord, for he said, the Lord forbid that I should do this. Can I drink the blood of men who went at the risk of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. The three warriors did these things. Now Abishai, son of Zariah, the brother of Joab, was chief of the thirty. With his spear he fought against three hundred men and killed them, and won his name beside the three. He was the most renowned of the thirty and became their commander, but he did not attain to the three. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was a valiant warrior from Kabzeel, a doer of great deeds. He struck down two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and killed a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. 
He killed an Egyptian, a handsome man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but Ben Aya went against him with a staff, snatched the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the things Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, did, and won a name beside the three warriors. He was renowned among the thirty, but he did not attain to the three, and David put him in charge of his bodyguard. Among the thirty were Ashael, brother of Joab, Elhana, son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shema of Harod, Elika of Harod, Helez the Paltite, Ira, son of Ikesh of Tekoa, Abiezer of Anathoth, Meb Une, the Hoshethite, Zalman, the Aothite, Mahari of Netopah, Haleb, son of Bana of Netopah. Aitai, son of Rebai, of Gibeah, of the Benjaminites. Beniah, of Pirathon. Hidai, of the torrents of Gaash. Abi Albon, the Arbathite. Asmaphath, of Bahurim. Eliaba, of Sha'albon. The sons of Jashen, Jonathan son of Shema, the Hararite, Ahim, son of Shara, the Hararite, Eliphelet, son of Ahasbai, of Maacha, Eliam, son of Aithophel, the Gilonite, Hezro, of Carmel, Paarai, the Arbite, Egal, son of Nathan of Zoba, Bani the Gadite, Zelek the Ammonite, Naharai of Beeroth, the armor bearer of Joab, son of Zeriah, Ira the Ithrite, Gareb the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, thirty seven in all. Second Samuel Chapter 24 Again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go, count the people of Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab and the commanders of the army who were with him, Go through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and take a census of the people, so that I may know how many there are. But Joab said to the king, May the Lord your God increase the number of the people a hundredfold, while the eyes of my lord the king can still see it. But why does my lord the king want to do this? But the king's word prevailed against Joab and the commanders of the army. So Joab and the commanders of the army went out from the presence of the king to take a census of the people of Israel. They crossed the Jordan and began from Aurora, and from the city that is in the middle of the valley towards Gad unto Jezer. When they came to Gilead and to Kadesh in the land of the Hittites, and they came to Dan, and from Dan they went around to Sidon, and came to the fortress of Tyre, and went to all the cities of the Hivites and Canaanites, and they went out to the Negev of Judah at Beersheba. So when they had gone throughout all the land, they came back to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. Joab reported to the king the number of those who had been recorded. In Israel, there were 800,000 soldiers able to draw the sword, and those of Judah were 500,000. But afterward, David was stricken to the heart because he had numbered the people. David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now, O Lord, I pray, take away the guilt of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. When David rose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say to David, Thus says the Lord, Three things I offer you, choose one of them, and I will do it to you. 
So Gad came to David and told him. He asked him, Shall three years of famine come to you on your land? Or will you flee three months before your foes while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days pestilence in your land? Now consider and decide what answer I shall return to the one who sent me. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is great. But let me not fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a pestilence on Israel from that morning until the appointed time. And 70,000 of the people died from Dan to Beersheba. But when the angel stretched out his hand towards Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented concerning the evil and said to the angel who was bringing destruction among the people, It is enough. Now stay your hand. The angel of the Lord was then by the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. When David saw the angel who was destroying the people, he said to the Lord, I alone have sinned, and I alone have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, be against me and against my father's house. That day, Gad came to David and said to him, Go up and erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aranuna, the Jebusite. Following Gad's instructions, David went up as the Lord had commanded. When Arauna looked down, he saw the king and his servants coming towards him. And Arauna went out and prostrated himself before the king with his face to the ground. Arauna said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? David said, To buy the threshing floor from you in order to build an altar to the Lord, so that the plague may be averted from the people. Then Arauna said to David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seems good to him. Here are the oxen for the burnt offering, and the threshing sledges and the yokes of oxen for the wood. All this, O king, Arauna gives to the king. And Arauna said to the king, May the Lord your God respond favorably to you. But the king said to Arauna, No, but I will buy them from you for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being. So the Lord answered his supplication for the land, and the plague was averted from Israel. Take care. God bless. I'll see you next time.